Let's do a recap of what we did so far. Till this point, we created certain containers, container instances, exposed them on a particular port, in this case, port number 80. We also had a public IP address, a DNS name, couple of containers, and all of them were responsible to host our web application. Let's try to draw certain diagrams and understand this better. So what we have is a container one, let's say my ecom app that was created and it had its own Azure container registry. That's where we pull the image from. We also hosted another app as well. We call it as web app and then it was pulled from another container registry. What we could have done is that instead of creating multiple container instances, we could have created both of them in the same container group. So now I'm introducing you to another concept called as container group. A container group is a collection of containers that are running on the same host machine. So all of these containers in that container group will be sharing the resources, will be sharing the network, the storage volumes, and also a life cycle. So if you go back to the concept of Kubernetes, we have something called as a pod. Container group is a similar concept to what we have a pod in Kubernetes. In this case, a container group is hosted on a single host machine. It has been assigned a DNS label name. It is exposed with a single public IP address on a particular port. It can contain multiple containers. One can be listening on one port and another listening on a different port. Each of these containers will be pointing to a particular volume or multiple volumes as well. So the containers inside the container group are independent entities. Container groups can share an external facing IP address, maybe one or more ports on that IP address, and then a DNS label with a fully qualified domain name as well. There are different scenarios of hosting multiple containers inside the same container group. And those scenarios would be, let's say you would like to host a web application in one container, and another container may be pulling the latest content from the source control. Or let's say you want to have the application in one container and logging done in another container. So the logging container will have the logs and metrics that are sent by the main application and writes them to a long-term storage. If you would like to have monitoring done within the application set, maybe you will have a monitoring container as well. So the monitoring container will periodically make requests to the application to ensure that it's running and responding correctly. And if required, it may also raise an alert. How about databases? So you may have a front-end container and a back-end container. The front-end is serving the web application on a particular port, and the back-end is retrieving and serving the data to the front-end web application on a different port. So these are the common use cases or common scenarios for hosting multiple containers in the same container group. Let's understand the importance of Docker and the terminology is used in the Docker world in the next lesson.